Hi there, Greg from Penguin Motors here. In this video, I'm going to take you through a few of the steps where we went from 216 horsepower all the way to 230 on our 2.3 race pinto. Hey, you ready, boys? Should we make some noise? So that was a noise on what did we achieve? As I said earlier, this is a, a brief run through the various steps from 216 horsepower to 230. Point to note here, this is a race engine and you would think that as much power as many revs as possible is the ultimate goal. Uh, but in practice, this engine has got to race against modern 16 valve engines. For them, they couldn't make all the horsepower at a zillion revs. And no matter what we do with a Pinto, we will never match the high-end horsepower of a modern 16-valve engine. So what we've got to focus on is our one strong point, and that's torque. Give the driver a thick bunch of torque right in the rev band where the car's gearing suits it well. So I'm after the best spread in kind of the range of 4,500-ish to 7,000-ish RPM. That's where we want the meat. That's what I want the most from it. Slightly surprisingly, as much as that first power run was good, it was also slightly fluked because, to be honest, on the distributor and the existing setup, I couldn't really better the power. But there was a bit of a wobble at the top end that I wasn't that keen on. So I decided at this point, as the engine's never actually going to run a distributor, I decided to switch ignition systems and I, I dug my own old ECU out, knocked up a quick ignition map that basically mirrored distributor on our own again, and that resulted in this graph. And finally, we we'll move on now. This is a fully mapped curve with the jet in and everything else as absolutely bang on as I could get. At this point, I'm convinced I can get no more out of this cam with the 45 DCOEs and their 40 millimeter chokes. At this point, I decided to step things up and try some different cam profiles. Mostly a fair bit more radical, which to be honest, it just didn't like. And what I finally ended up with was the same camshaft it's had in it since the day I very first built it. And you can see this cam gave a nice, useful bump in power right through the rev range, and we finished up with 220 brake horsepower and 190 pound foot torque. Next up, I decided to really switch things up a gear, and we switched out the intake manifold for a dead straight Gen V1, which we had to do some adaption in the milling machine and a bit of hand blending to make it fit a pair of 48 DCOEs. Carbs on, jetting done. Interestingly, the carbs ended up with the same size main jet 
as the 45s, albeit the airs and the emulsion tubes ended up with different, but the main jets ended up the same size. And on the 48s, it certainly wanted to rev. Um, the 48s lost torque right throughout the rev range, but they did not hang on at the top end, and we came out with 227 horsepower and 182 pound foot torque. So torque was basically down everywhere, but right at the right at the top of the rev range was a nice nice bump in the power. Um, probably completely useless on the road or rally car, but you could just about make use of that on a circuit car. So it certainly showed the engine had potential for considerably beyond 220 brake. There we go, power run, 48 mil Genvies, DTAS 40 ECU. Made lots of lovely power. Now, I know what you might be thinking, that last graph on the 48s, the power was still heading up at the end of the graph. Well, it was, but that's only really where I clipped the graph because basically it got to the very tip of the graph and the power just flatlined. You can go up, you can go down. But when I started playing with the Gemvis, I got my adjustable emerald in at trumpets out, and I found a sweet spot whereby I could keep the same top end power, but bring it further down the rev range, which resulted in a fatter torque curve, just where we need to be it. So that is what we finally ended up with. And that's the next graph coming up. So that's it, we're there for now. Our final numbers, the ones you really wanna know. We finally finished up with 230.5 horsepower and 190 pound foot torque on a boiling hot summer's day. So you never know, cooler climates, we might even have seen a few more horsepower. But that's not it, the end of the development. We've got plans to raise the numbers even higher still. And uh, if you wanna catch up with them plans, you know what to do guys, like, share, subscribe, click the bell, Ring the bell, do something about it anyway.